Good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to Sound Bites with Bill Wood, a certified lay minister at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, where our mission is to love God, follow Jesus, and serve others. And again, if you have any joys or prayer requests, please send them to the St. Paul's email address so that we may rejoice with you and pray with you. And if you would now, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to share and to hear your word. We thank you, too, for the many blessings that you shower upon us each day. And we set ourselves now in a position to hear you speak to us. We're listening, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you would, please open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 3. And we will read verses 4 through 18. And this is a rather lengthy passage, but uh, if you would follow along with me, and I think you'll see why we're reading all of this together. So 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning, and no one who, complete, who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's works. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning, because he has been born of God. There is now that this is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. This is the message that you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the devil, to the evil one, and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death and life, or death to life, because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death, and anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life with him." This is how we know what love is. Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, do not love with words or tongue, but with action and truth. And I realize that uh, we read and talked about verses 4 through 8 last week as we concluded our study, but I think that, we, that I needed to read those again this morning because verse 9 is a continuation of John's train of thought about sin and the reborn person. And verse 9 in the Amplified Translation reads, well, first let me read verse 9 in the NIV Translation. It says, uh, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. Now, in the Amplified Translation, it reads like this. No one born that is begotten of God deliberately and knowingly or habitually practices sin for God's nature abides in him. His principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanently within him, and he cannot practice sinning because he is born or begotten of God. So what is John telling us in this verse? 
I don't think that he is contradicting himself from previous verses, but is further explaining what life is like after accepting Christ. After accepting Christ, we take on the nature of God and therefore do not continue to practice sin because if we have the nature of God, the nature of Christ was that he did not sin. And so if we take on that nature, then we do not continue to practice sin. But when sin does happen, we have an advocate who intercedes for us and we receive forgiveness and our relationship with God is reestablished. We remain in him and do not continue to practice sin. And Barclay's commentary has this to say about this verse. John means that the man who is born of God cannot sin because he has the strength and guidance of the word of God within him. The Christian is preserved from sin by the indwelling power of the word of God. And I think what that means is we do not continue to habitually practice sin or continue habitually in sin. Now, continuing with verse 10 through 18. This is, and well, I will read those verses again. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. This is the message that you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Do not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brother's actions were righteous. Do not be surprised, my brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. And anyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. I believe I'll stop reading that right now and talk about these verses. I think that these verses continue the, uh, from the previous verse that our actions, or previous verses, in that our actions and attitude reflect who we are. This is how the children of God are known and how the children of the devil are known. John says that our life must reflect or emulate Christ, Christ's life. If we claim to be a child of God, then we must emulate the life of Christ. Simply saying that we are a child of God is not enough. John then again says that anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone a child of God who does not love his brother. He says, this is what you heard from the beginning, love your brother. And that's part of the gospel, to love one another, to love your brother is part of the gospel. And isn't that what Jesus taught? Don't we find that reflected in in the Gospels where Jesus said the, that you must love your brother as yourself. And so love is a primary part of, of the Gospel. And so that's what we're charged to do. <clears throat> John uses an example then of, of Cain from Genesis. And as you know, Abel is his brother. And that's who he's talking about here. And he used that example to help the church to understand what he says in the next verses about murder. He says that do not be like Cain who murdered his brother because his own actions were evil and his brother's actions were righteous. Also, he may have been thinking about Jesus' teaching on what we call the Sermon of the Mount, where, which is found in the fifth chapter of Matthew, verses 21 and 22, about anyone being angry with his brother will be subject to judgment, meaning that they may have committed murder because they were angry. And I believe if we read further in that, we'll see that what he is talking about there is that anyone that, that harbors anger and, and holds on to it, harbors anger in, in, in their hearts, that they are capable of committing murder. 
And so he says that if, you, if you're angry with your brother, then you have already committed murder. And John is telling us here that do not be like that. Rather, we are to love our brother. And then next, John gives us a reminder that the world will hate us because we dwell on doing what is right. That is, following God's will and doing what is right before the eyes of the world. That makes the world aware of their shortcomings, and people don't like to be reminded of that. Therefore, it hates us. Then in verses 14 through 18, John says things in a different way and what it means to be a follower of Christ and how the world recognizes us as such. And we will continue with that discussion next week as we finish up this chapter of First John. So it's been good visiting with you this morning, and I have enjoyed sharing this morning. And if you have any comments or different ideas about these verses, please send them to the St. Paul's email address, and I will address those issues in coming weeks. I would love to hear from you. So have a wonderful time with the Lord, and may the Lord continue to richly bless you, and go in peace and in the love of God.